Our scripture passage this morning comes from the 13th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, verses 10 through 17. Listen, hear, and receive God's word. Now, as Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which you ought to work. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all of his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 2018, the Pew Research Center sought to answer the question, why do Americans go or not go to religious services? This survey preceded COVID and we know that many people have not returned to in-person worship for a number of reasons. However, I believe that the results of the survey are still valid, whether people worship in person or remotely. The study found that the primary reason people cite for attending worship regularly, or at least twice a month, is to feel closer to God. Other reasons or motivations include so their children will have a moral foundation, to be a better person, and or for comfort in the times of trouble or sorrow. To a lesser degree, people indicated that they attend worship because they find the sermon valuable. Praise God. <laughs> to be part of a faith community, its family tradition or out of obligation, and or to socialize or meet new people. People who define themselves as believers and never or infrequently attend worship reported that they practice their faith in other ways. They have not found a worshiping community they like, they do not like the sermons, or they do not feel welcome. Have you ever taken the time to think about the reasons you attend worship? From the time I made my entry into the world, my parents took me to church. And as I grew, attending church, participating in worship and ministry programs was as natural as breathing. When I became an adult, church was a place where I felt grounded, a place I belonged, was loved, and surrounded by people who had nurtured and poured into, encouraged, and taught me what it meant to be a follower of Christ. In worship, I felt close to the Spirit of God. The church was a place of sanctuary, where troubles and burdens, disappointments, or cares were lifted. A place where there was freedom to exhale, to be authentically who God created to me to be, expressive, emotive, joyful, free. In the book of Luke, Jesus had sojourned with his disciples and followers sharing truths that they would need in order to continue after his crucifixion. As Jesus traveled, he had healed the sick and afflicted. He fed the hungry, raised the dead to life, overturned social and religious strictures that figuratively and literally bound people. Jesus, people had gathered by the thousands to follow and hear from Jesus. And Jesus warned his disciples to beware of the hypocrites people who hide behind their religiosity and their love of God, all while not loving others as they love themselves. 
After dropping some more knowledge, Jesus tells the parable of the barren fig tree, vegetation that's just taking up space in the garden but not producing any fruit. The caretaker of the garden implores the landowner to allow him to dig around the tree, spread some fertilizer on it, and if it does not produce fruit in the next growing season, then it can be cut down. Do you see any similarities between the fig tree and the hypocrites Jesus warned about? People who do not spread love, joy, peace, or freedom in the world, both are barren, empty, fruitless. In today's lectionary passage, while teaching on the Sabbath in the synagogue, Jesus encounters a woman who he discerns has a spirit that has her bent over. Now, we really don't know what's caused this unnamed woman's physical or spiritual ailment. What we do know is this. This woman has spent the last 18 years of her life unable to look up. She may have been able to look from side to side or slightly ahead, but she definitely looked downward, never up. If you will take a moment to think about how limited you would be if you could only focus on what was on the ground, unable to pick up a child or to engage with others at eye level, disengage from what was going on around you, unable to look at the sun and the moon and the stars. This woman's physical condition limited her ability to fully participate in community. Yet she pushed back against the conventions of her day and made her way to the synagogue, a place where she was not welcomed or accepted. Today's passage does not indicate whether this woman had a male individual that accompanied her. So in her context, she would have no agency or standing in her community. More than likely, the woman was financially insecure, marginalized, her marginalized by society, treated as unclean and banished by her faith community. But despite her infirmity, her social status, and her marginalization, this woman made her way to the synagogue on that particular Sabbath. I suspect that she knew in her spirit that she would find her healing, her release, and her restoration there that day. Many of us make our way to worship be it in person or remotely, and we bring our physical, mental, and spiritual illnesses with us. Many come broken by injustice, marginalization, and oppression. Many come bent over by financial insufficiency, unable to provide for themselves or their families. Many come beaten down by racism, sexism, ageism, xenophobia, and heterosexism. Many come grieving the loss of a loved one, a relationship, security, or self-worth. Many people come so discouraged, disheartened, hopeless, and dispirited that they have almost given up. And even if you do not personally identify with any of these life situations, you may know someone who does, or you come with your own situations and issues seeking relief, seeking community, seeking to be set free, seeking a word from God that will speak to your heart, your body, your mind, and your spirit. Now, if I were in the black church right now, I would tell you all at this point in the sermon to look at the person sitting next to you and ask them, what did you come to church for today? Did you come seeking a blessing, release, restoration, to hear from God, or did you come to church because it's what you do on Sunday before going to brunch? Did you come to church because you like or dislike the preacher and are here to either support or to create havoc? Did you come to church today because you are a person with authority and seek recognition as such and want to throw your weight around? Or did you come to church today because you are spiritually, physically, or mentally ill and you are here for a Sabbath healing? The woman in this passage did not approach Jesus. 
she did not ask to be healed. Jesus saw her. He saw her physical and spiritual condition, and he called her over. Jesus didn't pray. He didn't sprinkle any holy water on her. He did not anoint her with oil. Jesus simply spoke, woman, you are free from your ailment. And then Jesus laid his hands on her. I'm here to tell you that when Jesus speaks, demons flee. When Jesus speaks, captives are released from bondage. When Jesus speaks, chains are broken. When Jesus speaks, minds are regulated and set free. When Jesus speaks, the marginalized and the oppressed are restored back into community. When Jesus speaks, broken bodies, minds, and spirits are healed. And when Jesus touches you, hallelujah, you are never, ever going to be the same again. This woman's body was brought back immediately into godly submission. She stood up straight and she began to praise God, hallelujah. Now you would think that everybody in the synagogue that day would be rejoicing with her. But instead, the leaders of the synagogue, indignant that Jesus would heal on the Sabbath, declared to everyone in the crowd, there are six days of the week on which you can be healed and made whole. Come on those days. Don't come on the Sabbath expecting that. According to the religious leaders, Sabbath conventions and regulations following the rules and the traditions were more important than people being healed and made whole. We all understand the Old Testament concept of Sabbath that urged Israel to rest from all work on that day, just as, Jesus, just as God rested from the work of creation to bless and consecrate the Sabbath. However, Jesus counters the religious leaders' assertions that there are six days for healing with the Pharisees' own concession, which allows an owner of cattle to take them to water on the Sabbath, provided the cattle does not carry any burden. One commentator stated, the communal function of both human rest from work to acknowledge the Lord's sanctification of the Sabbath and the human activity of observance and keeping the holiness of the Sabbath is to give institutional communal function to both tables of the law, to honor and worship God alone and to render justice to neighbor. Although the woman came not seeking justice or healing, Jesus knew that she was carrying a burden, an 18-year-long burden that separated her from society and that was physically and spiritually debilitating. Wasn't the woman's need for physical justice more important than the cattle's need to be watered? I believe it was Jesus who said in the book of Mark, the Sabbath was made for humanity and not humanity for the Sabbath. George read in Isaiah 58, God was calling the Israelites to task as they placed more importance on form and function, on fast and rituals, by stating, this is not the fast that I choose. The fast I choose is to lose the bonds of injustice to undo the throngs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free. It is not to share your bread with, is it not to share your bread with the hungry, bring the homeless poor into your house, to cover the naked? God says when you do these things, then you call and I, the Lord, will answer. You shall cry for help and I will say, I am healed. Beloved people of God, what did you come to worship for today? Why are you here? Whatever your reason, today is your day. For every burden, every sorrow, illness, affliction, yoke, or malad a malady that you came with, Holy Spirit is here. 
Jesus is interceding and God is waiting for us to set aside our legalistic, systemic, institutional, and historical conventions that have kept us bent over, held us back, or caused us to place others in bondage. Just as Jesus restored the woman back to community when he queried, ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? By the word and touch of our Lord and Savior, Savior, you too have been set free from whatever has bound you, from whatever has bent you over, from whatever has distanced you from others and pronounced you as a social outcast. Receive your Sabbath healing today. Receive your Sabbath healing today. Receive your Sabbath healing today. May it be soft. 